Hey guys, Derek from the future here. Yeah, I barred Bardwald's time machine. Anyway, my computer took a dump while I was recording this episode and, well, I'm gonna do my best to try to make something watchable. You've been warned. Hey, welcome back. Today, we are gonna crossfire all of the things. So in my last video on the Beaver and Light, we went over the hardware and a basic assembly guide, uh, mostly some tips on how I prefer to assemble my whoops. Um, I've been flying these things since Jesse P changed the motors out in Inductrix and slapped a camera on it. Uh, it's been, I think, almost three years now. So I have a little bit of experience with these guys and I love them. But one thing that they're all lacking in is range. And after getting in on the Crossfire bandwagon, lack of range is not a cool thing. And I've just, I've always wanted to push the limits of how far these little guys can really go. We're gonna solve that problem. So, well, let's we'll stop talking about it. Let's get into it. I have a couple of products that I'm gonna use in order to maximize the range of the Acro B Light. Uh, well, the first item is a Crossfire Nano can't go wrong with these things especially for 30 bucks now to optimize video i've got one of the lumineer micro axes which is like ideal for these micros i've never put it on a whoop class i think it's going to be a little large i did opt for the one with the longer antenna wire let's start taking the acro b apart and installing some goodies now with the jeweler screwdriver we're going to remove the canopy and disconnect your camera that's it canopy is removed and let's pop the flight controller out. Our flight controller is out and here's our frame. The first thing that I am going to do is prep the frame. Uh, the reason why I'm going to do this is because we're going to put a little glue in here and I want to give it a couple minutes to dry while I'm doing my soldering. Because of the way I like to run my antenna, I like to do a nice clean knee install. I do modify my frame a little bit. Um, what I'll do is I'll put a little notch in this corner, basically just enough to accommodate the wire from Crossfire. So I'm just gonna put a little like half moon in here. I know what you're saying isn't cutting the frame, weakening it. Well, you're 100% right. Uh, and that's why we're gonna put a little glue in there, but it allows the antenna to fit nice and neat. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when I get to the installation portion of it. I'm going to take my antenna, once I find the notch, and I'm going to put it in that notch. I want to go a little bit back further with it. Essentially, I want to make sure it's going to be tight and that the wire isn't going to be too long because I'm going to wrap it around the duct like this. So you can kind of see how that's going into place now, right? And that's why I'm going to apply the glue on here now to hold this end in position. Uh, and then once that's dry, it'll allow me to wrap it much easier. Then I'm going to take the ground plane and we're going to go under and we're going to mount it around something like that, but we'll get there in a second. Uh, let's get to gluing the antenna in place. I like to use this E6000 on these frames. This is probably the equivalent of that welder's glue. And this is one of the only adhesives that'll stick to the material that the frame is made out of. Okay. I'm going to get a small drop. Oh, the E6000 on something pointy. I kind of like using safety pins. A larger one like this can be really handy, uh, but you could use anything. You could use a piece of a zip tie or literally anything pointy. <laughs> so I'm just going to get a little bead of this glue here. Um, and be careful to not get too much while you're doing this because, well, you'll make a mess and you'll probably regret it. Um, I'm happy with how my antenna's fitting in here and everything. So on the back side of this heat shrink, I'm going to apply a little bit of this here cement. And this glue sticks well, but it's relatively non-permanent on these things. So if you need to, you can really kind of go back and pull this apart. So I'm going to put the antenna in the groove. I'm going to pull it back tight to the heat shrink and press it against the duct. Just try to keep that lined up nice in the center. Okay, now we're ready for the hard part. 
and I'm literally not kidding when I'm saying that this is the hard part. Um, we're going to do some soldering and we're going to be soldering on some incredibly tiny pads. Um, I do have a diagram for this and I'm going to share it with you right on the screen. Ding! Um, but let's look at the pads. There are four of them on the back left of the board here. Here is the processor and here are the pads that we're after. And this is what we have. It looks like we have ground, UART2TX, UART2RX, and our five volts. Use the absolute smallest tip you have available on your soldering iron and don't use a crappy soldering iron for this. Um, borrow friends if you need to because it's really it's going to be really easy to wreck this board because these pads are so tiny. What I'm going to do is I'm going to touch that pad with the tip of the iron and just get a little bit of solder on it. All my pads are tinned. That was not easy. I think I'm going to take a peek under the old microscope to make sure I didn't mess anything up. Well, it all looks okay. I'm really close to stuff, but I don't see any solder bridges. I guess we're good. All right, let's prep the Crossfire receiver. I am going to use my own wire over what came with the Crossfire receiver. Uh, what I have here is 30 gauge, and it's much, much thinner than what came with it. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit easier to work with because these pads are so small, uh, and this is such a small aircraft. Okay, now we're ready to figure out whereabouts our receiver is going to go. And I know from experience, once I wrap the wire around for the crossfire antenna, it's going to fit about here. So I'll probably take these and fold them over like that. We really don't want a lot of extra wire here. So I'll probably cut, oh, about there. So it looks like I'm leaving myself with about an inch and a half of wire or so. Now this is key. Pay attention to this. You are gonna hardly strip these wires. You should barely see the silver from the aluminum wire poking through. And the two that I've done so far are a little bit on the long side. You know, you want to keep in mind that you don't want this length of wire any longer than the pad itself. And line up the wire on your pad. And it should solder pretty quickly. I think that's on there. Again, I'm going to go back after and I'm going to check all of these with my microscope because they're so tiny, I literally can't even see what I'm soldering. Um, this is more kind of like a stick it and pray technique than it is anything else. Our last wire. Alright, with clean hands, I got my scotch tape. And you want this 100% transparent tape. See, look at it, this is what you want. If you try to do it with that hazy stuff, it is not going to work. You're not going to be able to stretch it, and it's not going to stick to the frame right. And, well, whatever. You're going to have to figure something else out then, right? So I'm going to take a generous amount of this tape, and I'm going to be very careful on the sides that I'm touching. I do not want to touch the side that I'm sticking to the frame because it's not going to stay on there long term. However, I am going to handle the tape by the bottom edge because we're going to cut it off. Start lining up and stretching your antenna in the center of the duct and start the tape right at that edge at the end of the heat shrink. Now this side is always the trickiest. What we're going to do is we're going to really stretch this tape as we pull it around and we need to keep that antenna centered in this duct. See where I messed up? We got to push that down a little bit because if I don't the tape's not going to be able to grab the wire. So stretch it good. If you're stretching it enough you're not going to have wrinkles in the tape. And make sure you keep the tape lined up with the bottom half of the flare on the duct. I don't know if you guys can see it, but 
the frame flares and the tape is right on the bottom edge of that. Don't go past it because you're not going to be able to wrap it tight and it's going to wrinkle on you. Working it around and stretching it as I go. Now that I'm close to the end, I'm going to cut off the excess. Cut just a little bit past the end of the antenna. Hold down the end. We'll go a little past. Get rid of your strap. And continue to press that in place. That antenna looks pretty good. It's nice and even. Now that I'm happy with how it's on there, I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and I'm going to follow the bottom edge of the duct all the way around. And I'm going to cut the tape flush. Now I'm going to do the ground plane. To complete the installation of the frame, I'm going to take my E6000 again. And I'm going to put a little bit in that corner that we cut now. You know, you don't really need a lot of this stuff. That's why I'm using this tool. I'm going to make sure that's all tucked in there nice. And right in that corner, I'm going to put that bead. Essentially adding the structure to the frame again but also just really making sure that the antenna is not going to go anywhere well the glue set up enough so I'm ready to put my flight controller back in uh, it's gonna go in just like the original installation uh, but now instead it's going to have the crossfire antenna lead underneath the bottom like this. I like to wrap it underneath. Makes for a nice clean installation of everything. Uh, and it's also going to help you know, protect that wire and retain it in there real good. Um, it might be a little tight on the back side getting the grommet in now. That we have glue and uh, a wire in there. But it'll go, I promise. I've done this multiple times. Just be careful and patient and work its way in and you'll be good. That's all looking pretty good. You can see the antenna is clearing the power wires. Everything's got room here. Everybody's happy. Comes around the front nicely. This ultimately is probably going to end up like this and the antenna is going to come over the top. Time to install the old Akano P. Double check your connection. Um, I think some people are getting these shoved in wrong uh, and they're damaging the board and the camera so you know check your orientation. Uh, it is labeled on the flight controller. White wire is video. It's labeled as cam. Should probably get an antenna jammed in there. That lays like that. That should be able to come right down the side nicely. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it should work out pretty good with this, I think. See what I was saying about the length? I wanted to be able to take this and kind of jack it up a little bit to help with the range. Should get the old pop up here, the COM port. I'm going to hit connect. Okay, now that we're connect. We're going to go to our ports. We are going to shut this off configuration MSP on UART 1. And on UART 2, we are going to enable Serial RX, save and reboot. We're going to connect again. We are going to go to configuration. We're going to scroll down to receiver. We are going to say serial based receiver. And we are going to choose crossfire save that's it well that's the gist of it um this video kind of turned into a disaster um what are you gonna do it's way longer than it needs to be um but we have long range to whoop because i live in new england and it is freaking pouring rain out like it has been for months now um i'm not really gonna have any flight footage uh from this guy but it's coming i promise there is a b brain light playlist on my channel which all the content from these guys oh look at the beta unit. Ah! So, but all the content from these guys is going to be in that particular playlist. So if you're looking for anything, please check that out. Okay. I'm going to button this up off camera. I've got a lot of other things to do today. I'm not looking forward to editing this video. It's going to be a mess. Uh, check out my friends at hot dog FPV at hot dog FPV.com. Check out newbie drone. In my opinion, I really think they make one of the best whoop class aircraft. Uh, I love these things. They fly awesome. I love the unicorn motors. Uh, they're really good guys over there as well. I would encourage you to pick one of these up. It is really worth the money. But I'm done. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. <music>